Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Chad from Grayscale Gorilla. Thank you for picking up Area Light Maps, our brand new HDRI pack. And it's a bit of a, of a game changer in terms of the HDRI link workflow in that we are now going to be using the HDRI link workflow not on dome lights, but on area lights, okay? So this little overview video is going to be really quick. I'm just going to show you how it works. In fact, uh, it could be this, you could be using Octane, Arnold, whatever. It's going to work wherever HDRI link works. I'm using Redshift in this video. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so if you've installed everything correctly, it's just going to go right into the same folders as all your other HDRI packs that you've bought from us. And it's going to sit right down in your list. Boom, area light maps. There they are. Got 30 of these bad boys, all photographic area, area lights. Uh, we got soft lot boxes. We got ring lights. We got single chip LEDs, quasars. We got all kinds of stuff. Okay, so let's get this onto our area light. So just like on a dome light using HDRI link, we're going to grab our area light and go to the tags and select HDRI link. And from there, grab your area light. And if you're in Arnold, you'll grab color. If you're in uh, Redshift, you're going to grab this texture. And if you're in Octane, ah, uh, man, I forget. But whatever the parameter is that you normally use with HDRI link, that's the same parameter that you're going to drag in. So in our case, we're just going to drag in texture in, in Redshift here. Boom, right onto the HDRI link tag and it's all hooked up, but we can't see anything, right? So we need to select our area light in Redshift and say, make this light visible. Boom, there we go. Double click the tag to open up HDRI browser. I already have it open down here. And now we can just start to flip through all the different cool maps. We got these splotch, like sort of abstract light fixtures that are building off of the, uh, the Pro Studios Metal Pack, which is a great HDRI pack that we sell for doing metals because in metals, you don't want any like harsh reflections. You want some nice soft bits and little pools of light. So that's what these are built for. We've got some bounce cards, got some silver bounce cards, white bounce cards. We've got a Fresnel light, which will probably need to be scaled. We've got a ring light, We've got a Kino flow. Uh, we have a ring light, a uh, fluorescent ring light. We have a single chip LED. We have quasars. Oh man, there's so many. Um, let's just land on, we've got umbrellas. Let's, uh, let's land on the, uh, oh, this umbrella is cool. Let's just do this umbrella. Okay, so once we've got that selected, you can see that it's exactly like HDRI link that you that you know and hopefully love as much as I do. Um, and you got the same settings. You can double click this and you can you know open up the browser. You can select it and uh, click on the advanced tab and you have the ability to switch from preview resolution to full resolution, which in our case, um, I'm going to stick with preview for right now. And I tend to keep it on preview until I get to a certain scenario where maybe I see some of the resolution start to break down and then I'll switch it to full. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot else to do. It's very simple. It's very fast and it's very efficient. So let's go ahead and grab our area light. And I do want to show you a couple things. So if you want to adjust the color temperature, it's going to be slightly different in every renderer. But in Redshift, you do it like this. And the other ones will post some GIFs and showing you how to do it. Uh, so you come over to the uh, the general tab here, the general drop down, and under mode we're going to select color and temperature. And what this is going to do is it's going to blend the color temperature with our map, so that we can get some nice warm light. We can get some really nice blue lights. We can go all the way crazy blue, or maybe even crazy warm. Anyway, I'll probably do something like this, something in between. Uh, yeah, so that is getting it set up. It's very, very simple. So the other thing I wanted to show you is just how it works with multiple lights. Okay, so let's just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to just hold down control and just drag this guy over here. And let's just get to a place where we can see both of these lights at the same time. Okay, so you can adjust both of them at the same time just by selecting both of their tags. And now if I come in here and start clicking around, they're both going to change together, right? But let's say you don't want that. Maybe you want this soft box on that side, maybe the other side, you want a, I don't know, like a Kino or something. So let's grab that tag and grab the Kino. And let's grab that light and maybe that one's cool. And maybe we bring the intensity up. Boom. So you can start to, uh, you can use this and, and select multiple tags to swap out uh, multiple selections on lights. You can use it uh, to, you know, blanket change, maybe just a couple. Uh, it's it's very versatile. It's very much the same way that you'd use HDRI Link, uh, and it's just it just works. It's one of the reasons I really like it. You can start to kind of come in here and mess around. Maybe put something like that on top, and maybe bring that exposure down. We've got we're going to post some more videos on uses, and I'm going to show you some of the scenes uh, that I used uh, to create some of the renders that you see on the website. And walk you through some of that. Try to give you some some tips on how to use this thing. But yeah, I mean it's simple, but it's really powerful because now I can come in here and really art direct these reflections. In fact, if we just kind of zoom in on this guy over here, just zoom in on our on our piece, 
Maybe this one over here, we want to use one of these nice artistic splotches. Maybe we'll do that with all of them. Let's just grab all of them and do one of these abstract splotches. Now that's just going to look much better on a metal than it would uh, a straight up like flat constant white. It's going to be much nicer on a piece of metal. Anyway, so yeah, hope you check out all the other videos and um, uh, see how, how this thing is used. And also, we, we can't wait to see what you guys do with it. I want to, uh, hopefully, you guys get it in your hands and you start to use it on product renders and all sorts of motion design stuff. I hope you tag it and uh, share it on uh, social so we can see all the cool stuff that you guys are making with it. So anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to get custom colors onto uh, area lights in Redshift with area light maps. So you probably saw the other video where I threw HDRI link onto our area light. And then we grab our under general tab, we grab texture, and we drag that onto the HDRI link tag. And there we go. And you probably remember me saying to get the color temperature working with that, you got to change the mode to temperature and color. And then you can tint it uh, either way you want. Like in this case, we're going to go really warm or really cold. But if you want to add a custom color like pink or green or something that's not warm or cold, you have to do something a little bit different. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to change this back to color. I'm going to reset our texture to default and we'll leave our tag right where it is. But at the top of our area light, you can see we've got a parameter here called a little button saying add shader graph. And what that's going to do, if I hit that, it's going to create a shader and apply it to our area light. And if we select that shader, you can see we've got this RS physical light node, which is going to hold all the attributes of our area light. And then it's going out to the output of light and a normal shader that's going to go out to the surface. So in the case of a light, it's going to go out to the light. So we need to drive the color of that with a image texture. So if I just search for image, or actually I always forget, I think it's texture in here. I'm always using so many different renders. Texture, okay. And we're going to plug that directly into the RS physical light general color. Now we can drive HDRI link is going to drive this parameter right here. So under general, we're going to grab the, oops, grab that file name, put it right onto the HDRI link tag, and boom, there we go. Now what's great is we can just jump over to the adjust tab of that texture, and under the color multiplier, we can start to add whatever weird, crazy color we want. In fact, let's do like a pink here. There we go. Cool. So that is how uh, you would get that working. But let's say you wanted to not have to um, dive in and adjust that, uh, that shader parameter every time you wanted to change the color of that light. That can be a bit of a pain because you're essentially having to like, oh, I got to dive in here and then I've got to dive into that and then I got to scroll down and find you know the right parameter and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So what if there were an easier way uh, to get that to work and right now it's completely grayed out everything so if I want to adjust any of the attributes of that color I'm going to have to dive into the shader I'm going to have to twirl down a bunch of knobs so one trick that I like to use is grabbing the display color so if I say use color on now we're turning on the display color I can right click the display color and under expressions I can say set driver and then I can go into this texture grab that color multiplier and say expressions set driven absolute. Now, if I just grab this light, I can grab the display color and drive the color of that shader with display color. And the other uh, benefit is that it's going to uh, make that a lot easier for you. So you don't have to sit there and, you know, change dive into all these multiple parameters to change the color hopefully uh i'm hoping that at some point when we uh, when enough people are asking for it they will be able to add that feature to have the color of the light essentially multiply on top of the texture uh, if you're driving it with a texture so if enough people ask for that you could probably get that to happen anyway that's how you would uh, achieve the custom light uh using hdri link uh area light maps and redshift hope you enjoyed the video i'll see you in the next one Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to get HDRI link and area light maps working uh, in Octane. So we have Octane Live Viewer up here. I'm just going to go to Objects and grab a area light. And there it is all set to go. Now we're just going to come over to the area light and under Tags, grab the HDRI link tag. 
grab the octane light tag and drag texture up onto the area uh, hdr link tag release it it immediately creates the link you can see we've got our browser over here or you can just double click the tag to open the browser and let's grab now we can just select any light we want but you notice the gamma is a little bit screwed up and that's just because of the way that uh, octane interpolates that that color space so to fix that all you got to do is go into the texture hit the little texture map here under custom or sorry color profile you're going to change that to linear and now you have a correct light texture there you go you can even adjust the temperature if you want to do custom colors check out our other video where we talk about how to do custom colors with octane and that is it you are good to go enjoy area light maps for octane hey what's going on everybody in this video i'm going to show you how to get custom colors working with area light maps uh, for hdrlink in octane okay so here we have a pretty simple scene i just have a an octane light area light so i'm going to grab the octane tag i'm going to go over to texture and we're going to choose plugins c4d octane multiply and from there we're just going to dive into that multiply and we're going to change a few parameters here so i'm just going to go over to again multiplier plugins octane and i'm going to grab the image texture and next thing i'm going to do is grab hdri link and put it on that light let's go ahead and close the browser jump back into that light now i'm going to drag that texture for that multiply we just created jump in here boom there it is right there grab file drag it right on top of hdri link now nothing shows up yet that's because if we go back up oops too far in uh, the top slot of our multiply, we need to put a color. So let's go ahead and add a color. And there we have white, right? So now we can tint our light any color we want. Purple, green, doesn't have to be just color temperature. And let's say we like that green. But let's say that we don't want to have to dive into this material, or sorry, this uh, shading network, and jump into this, this color uh, we want to actually just be able to grab the light and do that. You can do that really easily. So if I grab the octane light itself and I just find the color attribute under the general tab and I right click and I say expressions set driver and then we can dive into that multiply that we created into that color, grab the color parameter and say expressions set driven absolute. And now I created a little null here with the with the expression tag. Now we can just grab our light. We don't have to dive into any sort of weird multiply uh, textures or anything like that, and we can adjust the color of our light in Octane. Of course, uh, you can do all of this. You can get colors very easily with uh, the color temperature slider, but if you want to do a custom color that's not warm or cool, like say you want to do green, you want to do pink, something like this, then this is the one way to do it. All right, so I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use HDrylink and area light maps in Arnold. I have Arnold up here. I'm going to go ahead and start the Arnold IPR. We're going to come over here and create a Arnold quad light. And then I'm just going to rotate my view over here and make sure that I make this light visible. It doesn't have to be visible, but I'm going to make it visible just by going to the camera setting and making that full one. Let's bring our intensity of that light up a little bit. Great, so we've got our area light built and we are ready to uh, assign the HDRI link tag, HDRI link on there. Let's go ahead and dock our HDRI browser anywhere you want. I'm going to put it down here, make it small, change it to area light maps. And now I just grab the area quad light and grab our color parameter, drag it right onto the HDRI link tag, and there you go. You're all hooked up. Now you can sit here and swap between all these different light types. You can adjust the exposure. You can come into the details tab and adjust the color temperature as long as you turn on blend. And there you go. And if you want to figure out how to add a custom color, we have another video for that. I highly recommend checking that one out for Arnold as well. All right, so that is getting area light maps working with Arnold quad lights. See you in the next one. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to add custom color to area light maps in Arnold. Uh, you're probably familiar with the current workflow. If you're not, I'll just do it really quickly here. Grab HDR link on our quad light and grab our quad light. We're going to drag the under main, the color parameter, onto our HDR link tag, which then you know makes our map. And if we want to adjust the color temperature now, we just go over to the details, color temperature, make sure blend is turned on, and now we have the ability to make it warm or cool. 
But let's say that you wanted to create maybe a different color altogether, like something like green. You can't do that, right? It's not going to work. So we'll turn this off, and that's a limitation of Arnold and a lot of the other renders as well. But there's a pretty simple workflow uh, to getting that the way you want it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to the Create Network, or Create in my, uh, my Material Editor here. I'm going to go to Create Arnold, and we are going to grab a image. And right there, we got our image. Now our HDRI link tag, we don't want to actually link that to our color parameter anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to Shader Network. And what that's going to do is it's going to say, well, what shading network do you want to drive the texture of this light? In our case, it's going to be this image that we just grabbed right here. Now we just need to grab that image node and drag image name onto HDRI link instead. And there you go. Right? So now you don't have to do anything else except for come over to the multiply on this image texture and just change the tint. And now you can change the tint to whatever you want. And what's great, if you don't want to dive into this every time, even though it does sit right here, if you just twirl it down, you can get to it right there. If you want to get easier access to this, there's an easy way to do that. If you just grab your light and go under basic, you can say use color. I'm going to say on, which is just going to change the uh, the display color of our object here. And we're going to say expression, I'm right clicking, expressions, set driver. And then we're going to dive back into that light again under main, crawl, crawl down to our multiply. and Here's where we're going to say expression set driven absolute, which is basically going to take the color of our display and multiply that onto our texture. So we did this right. There we go. In fact, we can just make it live if we bring it, twirl it down. So there you go. That's an easy way to add custom colors uh, to your network. And of course, if you have multiple lights, this is great too. If you have multiple lights, let's just go ahead and move this. Now, obviously, you'll have to set up unique shading networks for different different uh, map types because obviously they're if they're using the same one, if you can see here, if I change this, it's going to change on both of them. So you would need to set up unique uh, networks here for unique map types, which is an unfortunate restriction. Uh, we're hoping that a lot of these third-party renders will allow you to tint textured lights right here in the light natively, but as for right now, this is a good workaround. If you need something beyond uh, color temperature in terms of color of your lights, this is a way to do it. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.